Welcome to this video. My name is Ross McFadgen. I'm the product manager at Diagnostic responsible for our molecular portfolio. And today we're going to dive into an introduction to the Aviti NGS platform from Element Biosciences. So let's take a quick overview of Element Biosciences as a company. They were founded back in 2017 by ex Illumina and Pac Biostar, who had the idea to democratize sequencing and make it more affordable and accessible. The first of ET was launched in 2022. 2023 was spent creating the global distribution network and releasing some updates to their sequencing chemistry. By the end of 2023, they'd celebrated their 100th install of a VT globally. In 2024, there were some further updates to the sequencing chemistry and the 200th of ET install was celebrated. Today, where we see a VT, we have over 360 systems installed globally in over 40 different countries and celebrating around 10,000 runs a year and counting. And the three main features that I like to speak about with the VT are the quality, affordability, and reliability. So Q30 has often been the gold standard for NGS quality scores for many years, but what we see with the VT is a really groundbreaking quality able to achieve Q40 and even Q50 quality scores. When it comes to affordability, in our local market, we see pricing 30 to 40% lower per sequencing kit to some of the market leaders. And in terms of reliability, the mean time between failure of over 160 days, ensuring that you have a quality system to operate with. So let's take an overview of the Aviti system itself. So Aviti is what we call a dual-sided NGS system. This means we have two flow cell compartments, two reagent bays, and two waste bays on each side. So effectively, you get two NGS systems for the price of one. Looking at some of the features of a VT, as I mentioned, really high quality data. So it's spec at more than 90% of Q30. In our local market in South Africa, we can see sequencing costs as low as 180 Rand per gigabase of data generated. As I mentioned, we have two fully independent flow cells and each of these can generate up to 2 billion reads per flow cell. There's a range of sequencing kits available and our maximum read length is two by 300 for those more longer read applications. And we have a variety of low, medium and high output flow cells. So when speaking about flexibility, VT really gives us multiple options here. Firstly, we have dual independent flow cells. These can be run at the same time or completely independently completely different NGS applications. Within the flow cell, we actually have the option to split the lane, something called individually addressable lanes. And this allows us to sequence both lanes independently. This can be used when starting a new NGS run, you need to optimize your loading concentration. So you can load two different library concentrations on each lane of the flow cell. Another use case might be that you only have 16 indices and for example, 32 samples. Now, those obviously can't be run on the same flow cell, but you are able to load them each individually. So loading 1 to 16 on lane 1 and 17 to 32 on lane 2 and have those sequenced and demultiplexed individually. So when looking at some of the flow cell configurations on VT, as I mentioned, we have low, medium and high output options with the reads indicated below. And this would be the single ended read number. So if you're talking about paired end reads, we would need to multiply this by two. So for example, our high output kits generate 1 billion polonies or 2 billion paired end reads. Now there are actually three different AVT systems on the market. There's the AVT LT, which is the low throughput system, the standard AVT and then AVT 24. And as you can see here, the low throughput AVT can only run the low and medium throughput flow cells. To run the high throughput flow cells, you either need to run it on a standard VT or a VT24 system. So Element really reinvented a new way of doing sequencing detection. And there's a few new terms here that we need to uh, be familiar with. So firstly, instead of clusters, a VT generates polonies. So a polony is a copy of the library. This has been amplified through rolling circle amplification which means that less errors are introduced since there's no PCR used to copy the library template. 
The Polony is a concatenator of about a thousand copies of the library, which is required to amplify the signal that is generated for each base incorporation event. But in using RCA, we see much lower error rates and much lower PCR errors in our libraries. So here we're looking at a standard sequencing cycle for the ABT system. Firstly, we have our Polony that's been generated through rolling circle amplification and then the core detection molecule of a VT sequencing called the avidite. The avidite is a fluorescent molecule with a core body and then these appendages or arms that are coming off. Each arm has a nucleotide and each avidite corresponds to a particular nucleotide. So for example, this green avidite would be a T nucleotide. So if we look at one sequencing cycle, what happens? After the polony is generated, our avidite binds. This involves a sequencing primer binding to its binding site, as well as the polymerase, which will bind to this complex and find the first open base. The avidite that corresponds to the open base would then bind and be held in position by the polymerase. We then wash off the unbound avidites. We detect the base using fluorescence, and then the avidite is removed. So now we need to step to the next open position on the template. This is done using a reversibly terminated nucleotide and an engineered polymerase. This steps one base forward, removes the block, and then the cycle can start again from the next nucleotide position. The instrument workflow for a VT is also different to other systems on the market. So we first generate our polonies or clusters, and then we do index one and index two reads first in the forward direction. So this is a nice feature because it allows you to see your index assignment very early on in the run to see if something has maybe gone wrong. Following index one and two, we do read one in the forward direction. Then there is a paired end turnaround and we have the paired end read two after that. Finally, followed by an automatic built-in post-run wash. Here's a quick video demonstrating loading on the AVT flow cell. We have our flow cell binding oligos. A linear library binds to its complementary region and is circularized. Rolling circle amplification is then used to generate 1,000 copies of the molecule into a polony. And here the sequencing reaction can begin. So we have our sequencing primers binding to the sequencing primer binding site. The polymerase then binds and the avidite is introduced so that the open bases bind to their complementary nucleotide. It is then fluoresced and the signal is detected. And this is happening over a billion times on a high output flow cell. So I've spoken about quality and I want to show you some data here that was independently generated from Dr. Yutaka Suzuki at the University of Tokyo. And here he has compared MGI, Illumina and several different VT sequencing chemistries. So as I said earlier, Q30 has generally been the gold standard for sequencing quality for many years. And here you can see both MGI and Illumina able to achieve those quality scores throughout a 300 cycle run. With our standard VT CloudBreak assays, we often see higher than Q40 data generated. And here we can see an example of that throughout the run holding really steady at Q40. Now VT also have a sequencing chemistry called UltraQ. And I'll speak a bit more about this later, but UltraQ enables up to 70% of Q50 data in a run. So really, really high sequencing quality. And not just in regards to Q scores when we speak about quality, but due to the rolling circle amplification that is used, we see almost no index hopping in our data and also very, very low optical duplicates, less than 1%. And due to the nature of the chemistry of a VT, it is really good at dealing with homopolymers. So we see a flat error profile after homopolymer bases, enabling really high quality scores. And this is actually an example of a local run done by one of our customers. So this was done on a 2 by 150 low output kit, which generates 500 million paired end reads and outputs around 75 gigabases of data. Firstly, what you can see in this run is a really high quality score achieving a mean Q score of 42.7 and keeping that steady throughout the 150 cycles. We were able to generate 550 million paired end reads and 81.8 gigabases of data, 
so a 10% increase in what the kit specs. This was done without any decrease in our quality score. We achieved a Q30 of 94.6 and index assignment of 99%. And here we're looking at another local run done by one of our customers. This was using a 2x300 medium output kit, which generates 200 million paired end reads and 60 gigabases of data. As you can see in the base composition of these libraries, this was a low diversity Amplicon run which a lot of NGS sequences sometimes can struggle with. As you can see, based on our run specs, we achieved 334 million paired end reads, which is 67% higher than the kit specifications. This equated to 100 gigabases of data and a mean Q score of 42 or a Q30 of 93.4%. So even though we maxed out the loading on this assay, achieving 67% more reads, it did not affect the quality score. So I mentioned earlier that Element have a chemistry called Cloudbreak UltraQ, which allows for up to 70% of Q50 data. There are certain considerations when running this asset. For example, you need to prepare libraries using Element's Elevate Mechanical Library Prep Kit. You need to use the long UDI adapters and a PCR-free workflow, using a recommended input of 200 to 1000 nanograms and targeting an average insert size of 350 base pairs. You then need the AVT Cloudbreak UltraQ sequencing reagents. And in doing this, you can achieve up to 70% of Q50 data, which is some of the highest data quality in short read sequencing on the market. So one of the great things about AVT's chemistry is that it is directly compatible with most library prep vendors on the market. And this means that there's no need for any conversion or additional time or money spent to get your libraries compatible for AVT. It's often quite a headache when moving to a new sequencing platform that your old libraries you were using are no longer compatible. And this is not an issue for AVT. The intention for the system was for it to be an open system and to allow as many library preps as possible to be compatible. So this means you can take your standard Illumina library, load it onto an AVT flow cell, and it will be able to sequence with no problems. So just to really show again in terms of the cost of a VT and why it really falls into its own unique space. So for example, with Illumina over the years, they developed higher and higher output systems, which was able to bring down the price per gigabase, which is a metric we can use to really assess the affordability between different sequencing platforms. What does it cost to generate one gigabase of data? And as you can see with the NovaSeq, they were able to get down to very low per gigabase pricing but the downside is that you have these massive runs that could take thousands of samples to fill, and often you need to wait to batch to be able to fill the run and achieve that low price per sample. With the VT, what we can say is that it delivers NovaSeq cost per gigabase in a benchtop instrument, which means you no longer need to wait to batch. You can run smaller samples or smaller batches more frequently, yet still achieving very affordable and low sequencing costs. And Element have really made a commitment to this affordability, and they've said that they will guarantee the price per reagents for the lifetime of your VT system. So this means that this low reagent cost is fixed and won't increase outside of any exchange rate fluctuations. I've included this poster, which is done by Element, just showing VT's feasibility for doing 16S metagenome sequencing. One of the key takeaways from this is due to the nature of the VT chemistry, we need much, much less Phi X in a run compared to the same samples run on an XT2000. So for example, when doing 16S on an XT, which is a low diversity library type, you often need to use 30 or up to 40% Phi X to control for the color balancing in a run. That 40% Phi X reads are automatically wasted and you cannot use that as your data. With a VT, we only need as little as 5% for the exact same library types to be able to generate high quality, affordable 16S and metagenome sequencing. So another groundbreaking product that Element was able to launch with the VT is something called Trinity. So Trinity simplifies traditional hybrid capture sequencing workflows to enable run starts in under a day. 
And this is done by cutting out multiple parts of the traditional hybrid capture workflow. So if we look at what a traditional workflow encompasses, you start with a DNA library and a set of target probes, for example, an exome panel. You then hybridize your probes with your library overnight for about 16 hours. We then use beads to capture the probes that are bound to their complementary regions, followed by multiple heated wash steps to remove the unbound probes and improve the specificity of the reaction. That is followed by a PCR to amplify the library's molecules that have been captured. And then finally, a QC step right before loading onto the instrument for sequencing. This can take multiple days and has several laborious error-prone steps. With Trinity, what we do is we start with a library and that same probe set. We combine them for a hybridization reaction using the one-hour FOST Hybe workflow. After the hybridization, this entire hybe mix is loaded onto the flow cell for sequencing, and the capture steps are all performed automatically on board the flow cell. So this enables a less than one day workflow and removes those error prone steps. Trinity was released with twist and IDT exome probes, but there's also options for custom panels. So again, looking at the Trinity workflow, less than one day for the hybridization reaction, which is then put directly onto the flow cell and sequenced in a 24 or 38 hour run. This means we have a reduced hands-on time, higher performance since we have no PCR, so there's a lower duplication rate, no wash buffers are needed, no post-capture PCR, no post-capture QC, all blocking oligos are required for the Trinity workflow. This means that we have higher complexity libraries since there's less PCR bias, so we actually see improved variant calling sensitivity for these assays compared to the traditional approaches. This slide is just showing an example of what can be achieved even further with Trinity. So we could take our DNA library and target probe set, perform the hybridization. We can then take that same whole genome library, combine it with the probe mix, and then put that onto the cartridge for sequencing. So this would allow a target enriched portion of the genome alongside a shallow whole genome sequencing run to be performed from the same sample in the same sequencing run. And this is looking at an example of a genome viewer such as IGV, plotting out the reads from a Trinity workflow and then also Trinity plus the low pass. So what we can see with Trinity is that we have these regions that have been captured at high depth, indicating the target enriched portion of the genome. But when that is combined with a low pass sequencing from the same sample, we now have the target enriched portions of the genome that we're interested, in, but we also have a whole whole genome backbone, which can be used for copy number detection and other forms of genetic analyses. And finally, I want to speak about the analysis solutions that are offered with Element. So firstly, Elembio Catalyst. And this is really allowing Element to take control of your data generation and storage. This is a paid service where Element use AWS to basically store your data and perform the FOSQ generation. There are other options such as connecting with a partner that you already use, for example, GenCove or Fabric Genomics. And this allows for data to be automatically streamed from the Aviti system to your selected partner for downstream data generation and storage. And then fully custom options, fully customizable options are also available. So for example, if you're already using an AWS bucket for data storage, you can link that AWS account to the Aviti output so that again, data is automatically streamed after a run into your analysis pipeline. There is also an option for a local server. So this would allow you to build your own FOSQ generation on your own local infrastructure using things like a Docker distribution or static binary executable. So there's many options available depending on what works best for your needs. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to contact me. There's my email address for any information on the Aviti or any other Element Biosciences products.